So today I wanted to talk about evaluating plugins. Um, it's kind of a big decision when you used, uh, create a site. But in light of Alicia's talk, I think I'm going to change pace a little bit. I want to talk about my emotions. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. Uh, I think it over it. Uh, okay, so for those of you who don't work with me, I'm Christian. I'm the technical director at Imagine. Um, WordPress developer, you can follow me on Twitter at CWP Nolan. I'm always there kind of linking out and talking about WordPress stuff, PHP, front end stuff, all around nerdy things. Um, but I also want to take a moment and thank the WordPress RA Meetup group. Uh, you guys, you know, it's a, it's a volunteer effort. It's beyond just, all, everything you can imagine probably goes into organizing a monthly event, let alone the work they do with WordCamp Rhode Island. It's a, it's a lot of work and they're not compensated for it, so I think it's a really big deal. I give a round of applause for them. <laughs> got to go check out WordCamp Rhode Island uh, this fall. It's going to be awesome. It was great last year, great venue. Check it out. So let's start with why we even need to consider evaluating plugins. Um, I, I mean, this is WordPress. WordPress as a community is part of the huge reason why you've chosen is because plugins exist. Uh, it's it's hugely important. It's why you want to do it. It allows you to, to do so much. So I think if we take a step back, though, and look at the definition of a plugin, you can kind of start seeing why you need to take into consideration evaluating it. So iThemes kind of had a, had a good uh, definition. They said WordPress plugins are bits of software that can be uploaded to extend or expand the functionality of your website. That sounds pretty cool, right? So you got WordPress, which is awesome, and then you can get plugins, which make it even more awesome. And then your site starts feeling like this. <laughs> you got like Mark Kelly, I believe, having a fly going on, and you just feel awesome. Um, but what you don't really know is that if you start looking at that, that back at that definition a little bit, it's of software. This is code we're talking about. Okay, so it can be great. Someone can write some really great code, it can make your site awesome, but they could maybe write some code a little poorly, or maybe it gets stale and it starts becoming something that can be a vulnerability on your site. And in 2013, there was a study that showed that 22% of hacked sites are from poorly coded plugins. I take a little bit of reservation with the word poorly here, because I don't think that's really fair. Uh, poorly coded could mean that it's just out of date. It just wasn't updated. Poorly coded could mean that they sucked. It's a gamut, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, 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 you know, splitting hairs a little bit, but the thing you should take away from it, though, is that plugins, in general, could be 22% of the reason why your site got hacked. And some of these potential problems could be simple, okay? It could be, it could be just something that you can deal with and take in stride and kind of fix. It could be decreased performance, okay? That could be a problem in SEO, though, so you want to take care of that soon. It could break your layout, it could be a conflict with the style sheet, because maybe they didn't write specific styles that made it so that it only affects the plugin. It could be the old white screen of death, right? How many of you have had that before? You install a plugin, all of a sudden everything goes blank, now you have to get into FTP, you have to rename the plugin, so you actually get back into the back end of it. It's, but it can get more nefarious. You'd be talking about cross-site scripting. You get stuff injected into your site. Now you have a brand that you're trying to, to bring relevance to, and now you've got porn injected to it. It could be SQL injection, right? Now, you got data, now you've got malicious stuff in your database. Arbitrary file download, broken authentication, denial of service attacks. All these things are real, and they can affect your brand. So now you've got a site that feels like this. This is the dream, right? This is the thing you think that's going to happen. And then it turns into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real feeling. <laughs> And to paraphrase Jessica Rabbit, plugins aren't bad, some are just coded that way. It's not... <laughs> and this is not something that is specific to just, you know, one-off people who have under a thousand active installs. 
This happens to real plugins. Okay? Jetpack, Yoast, Ninja Forms, Ew, Image Optimizer, <laughs> WD Mobile Detector. <laughs> these are all things, these are, and these are plugins that are used by people, okay? Even though you shouldn't be using WP Mobile Detector, a lot of people do. And a lot of people are affected. So let's go back to that why. <clears throat> it's beyond the inconvenience of your site being down. It's beyond trying to struggle through why, what plugin caused your site to be hacked. We're talking about your brand, okay? In a lot of cases, your site is your first impression. And if you bomb on that first impression, someone's not going to come back. And if you're in the business of creating websites for your client, that's your client's brand that's tanking. And now they come back to you and they say, well, why, why did this happen? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you inform me that I needed to take some steps to make sure that I'm adding a plugin that is worthy of being on my site? Now you have an unreferable client. Now it's your brand. So someone else, you've built a site for somebody else, and now their brand is down, and now your brand is down. You have now an unreferenceable client because they had a poor experience with the plugin. That might not even be your fault. You're right, you built the site, you handed it off to them, and now they decide to administer it and add their own plugin, but they didn't feel educated. So I'm gonna go through a couple of non-developer steps on things you can do to kind of educate yourself, and then you can take these to educate your end user as well, if you build sites for other people. It's not really a step, but grab a piece of paper, grab notepad, word, whatever you're gonna use, we should track our pros and cons. Because when the site, when you're done going through these things, your memory is probably gonna be only as good as the last thing you looked at. So, and a lot of times we wanna kind of trick ourselves, right? We want that plugin. That's why we're looking for it. We don't want to, to say no to something that might solve a problem for us. So make a list of it. Make a pros, con, cons. As you go through each of these things, put them in a certain bucket, and at the end of it, take a high level look at it. So first, a nice overarching thing you can look at is check what's the rating, okay? We have this community available to us. And I'm gonna be speaking relative to the WordPress repository for, for plugins. But we have this community available where people can download and rate plugins. So we might as well use that to our advantage. So this is an example search I did for, for sitemaps. And this is a real gotcha situation because we have two plugins that look like that might be a fit, right? You want to look for something probably around a, a four star grader. But they only have, you can't really you guys see from where we are, but they only have four reviews. Four people have rated it as four stars. Right, some combination thereof. And down here, this five star, only three people have rated it. So you can't go on rating alone. You have to take a look at things contextually based upon what else is there, how many ratings are there. And it's not a, it, it, there's no set line, there's no set number that we can give you. But you, you're going to want to take a look at, you, you want to get an idea that when you look at a review of plugins, that people have come to a consensus, more than four that this plugin is good, right? Because, I mean, four people. That could be his wife, uh, his sister, and his other Gmail account. And then one person could this off. And so, I mean, that, that you, need, you, you need a bunch of people at least, because then you can feel comfortable. Once more people have come into the room and said, yeah, I think this plugin's pretty good, you can feel better. And part of that, too, is going to be looking at the active installs, right? Like this one up here, that small sitemap, has 9,000 active installs, and sitemap index has 1,000 active installs. I'm going to believe the 9,000 active installs rating over the 1,000 plus because more people are actively using the plugin. But in general, this is not, this is something you want to be, this is a trap. You want to look out for the situation. Second, uh, third thing you want to look at is that, is it maintained? Okay, so if we go into a detail of a plugin, you'll see that there's two things you can look at. There's the uh, meta information over here about the last time it was updated. In this case, I'm looking at advanced custom fields, and it was updated two months ago. So that's a good sign first, right? It's been updated recently. But the second thing I should do is jump into the change log. Because inside that change log, it's going to show you how often it's updated. And once you're inside here, you can also see what kind of updates are made, right? If the developer is giving good release notes, you can see the kind of changes they've made. And you can also get an idea of what's actually been wrong with the plugin. So maybe. 
Maybe you'll have a plugin that's in its infancy, and you like the idea of it, but in the change log, you see that they're, they're fixing a lot of security issues they're, they're fi in, or data sanitation issues, and you, you, you might want to put that plugin to a side and kind of come and revisit it once you see updates being made to it that aren't you know, so core-driven, and things that you think that should have been handled already. Because you don't want to be somebody else's guinea pig either. So is there support? Right? We want to also know that when someone does have an issue with the plugin, that they're responding to it. So in the WordPress project, the repo for plugins, there is a support section, and you can see the kind of conversation. This is for Jetpack. So you can see there's a lot of conversation here that's happening, a lot of back and forths in the post co uh, column, but also notice that up here they pin something. They say there's, a, there's official support here. So also look for other resources. A lot of these people follow a freemium model, so maybe they'll put something on the WordPress repo, but they'll have a premium version and they'll have a site that supports that, that tries to upsell you to it, and that's where they're going to put their support. So you might not, don't look only one place for the support, they might have it other places. They might also use it, in, might use GitHub, all their stuff might be in the, over there. You want to check for vulnerabilities. There's a great utility, uh, the WP Scan Vulnerability Database. They look at WordPress core, themes, <coughs> plugins, and they publish vulnerabilities. Uh, often after they've, in most cases after they've been fixed, so they don't want to bring attention to them. But here you can search, if you have a plugin in mind, you can go here, you can put the plugin name in there, and you can see if there's any open vulnerabilities for the plugin. So for example, you can type in Yoast SEO, and you can see back in early May, there was an issue for it. And so if you're thinking of installing that plugin, we all know, we all love it, but let's say you didn't know about it. You can then go into the details and you can see information about that issue. Most notably, they tell you when it was fixed. So if you find a plugin that has open issues that haven't been resolved, you probably don't want to use it. Okay? Especially if it's something like uh, sensitive data exposure. You want to test your plugins too. You don't want to just activate it in your production site. So you want to use a staging environment, development environment. If you're using something like WP Engine, they give you a staging environment that you can use. If you're using, uh, you know, if you have your own hosting, you could put it off a subdirectory uh, or subdomain. Um, you could put it on a local environment as well. But either way, you want to test this someplace that's not your production site because if you do get that white screen of death, if you do get a drastic performance decrease. If you do have broken layout, you want to catch that not in your production site. You also want to benchmark your performance. So before you actually activate it, you want to use something like GT Metrics or Web Page Test or Google Page Speed, and you want to be able to check the performance of your site before you activate the plugin and after you activate the plugin. If you see a huge decrease in performance, now you know you've got an issue, and this is going to be beyond just, oh, my visitors have a slow site experience. This can now negatively impact you for SEO as well. So if you see a huge drastic um, hit to your performance, that would be another red flag. So it doesn't, it goes beyond that as well though, okay? Once you finally find a plugin, once you activate it, you, it's, it's not the end of it, right? You need to continually be able to keep tabs on your plugins. So, Keep your plugins and themes and core also, but keep it up to date. Security uh, releases are going are to be made and you want to update those. Okay? You don't want to be behind. You want to audit your plugins on a monthly basis. right? Go on, um, you should step back every month and take a look at your site and say, what's the general health? Take the pulse of it. Am I using a plugin that I don't need to be using anymore? Is there, have I missed some updates? You know, just take a very high level look at your site, make sure everything's running smoothly and that you're not missing, uh, missing any updates. Subscribe to a lot of services. A lot, this is a big segment of websites in general, but WordPress too, this is a huge segment. People talk about security all the time. You go to WordCamp, you're gonna hear about security. There's gonna be several talks about it. Some places even have tracks devoted to it. There are services you can subscribe to whether it be the, uh, the WordPress vulnerability uh, database or uh, WordFence email subscription. You can, you can subscribe to all these places and get notified when these things happen so you can be ahead of the curve. Don't hold on to these 
these unused plugins, right? We're not, you don't want to be on an episode of Borders. Like, you just, if you have a plugin that is deactivated, get it out of your site. If you're concerned that you're not going to remember it because you want to hold on to it, favorite it. Okay, you can have favorite plugins in your repo and you can go back and check them out. If it's not in the, re in the WordPress plugin repository, make a spreadsheet. Put them, put them in there. Put it someplace else. Don't leave uh, un uh, deactivated plugins in the site because it's still there. It's still code. It still could be referenced. Someone could call. Back up your site nightly. Find a solution out there. Go. Get something, uh, whether it be like Backup Buddy or some other third-party service, or talk to your hosting provider. Take nightly backups of your, of your site, especially the data. So there's some other resources here too. This is the, the link out to the VP, um, uh, the WordPress vulnerability database. There's a kind of cool podcast, uh, A to Z, uh, plugins A to Z. Listen to they review plugins on seems like a weekly basis. Uh, some articles here: importance of updating a security article. Um, how, to, how WordPress sites get hacked from Torque Magazine. Uh, compare plugins uh, solution from ManageWP. So if you're torn between two plugins, you can add them there and it'll kind of give the breakdown for you. Again, some performance stuff, uh, GT metrics, webpagetesting.org for your site speed. You have your security scanner for security. So if you wonder if your site is compromised at all, you want to know the general health of your site, you can put your site through that. And that's WordFence where you can subscribe to their uh, annual email. With that, anybody have any questions? First off, Christian, great job. Thank you. Uh, you bring up a really great point of keeping plugins updated. Yeah. Uh, do you use any services to automatically update plugins? Sure. So you could use, right now, we're using MainWP. So that is a self hosted kind of solution where you could uh, update all your plugins with one click across multiple sites. Um, if you're a developer, you could even configure WP config to update your plugins automatically. But I would recommend if you are going to update, uh, I like updating the security patches automatically because that's security. But uh, I think if you're going to update your, your site for any reason, especially some plugin author who, if it's coming from the WordPress repository, that's just doing it out of just I like it, you know, you should probably be, do, be updating it and testing your site. I wouldn't leave it blind. Because, again, we're talking about your brand. So you want to be able to make sure that any steps you follow to, to be able to decide whether you want the plugin on there, you should, probably should be following up on when there's an update. So what was the update? What was the reason for the update? And do it in a staged environment before you move on to uh, your production environment. Any other questions? All right, awesome. Thank you very much, guys.